founder and managing director, Raira Group, uh, including Raira Eco Ventures operations within the spheres of agriculture, aquaculture, waste management, and alternative energy. Daryl. Morning, fellow legionnaires of Parashurma and uh, Dr. Mashalkar for this wonderful document that they have given us. When I was asked to speak, I was uh, on agriculture. You know, being an entrepreneur in many fields, it's quite difficult to find uh, and focus on a particular aspect in that particular subject. But I thought to myself, what can I contribute in this uh, field when there are so many other uh, illuminaires in this field sitting here itself in the audience? But it dawned to me that what I am talking about is the go-on dream. That's what actually this document is all about. It's this go-on dream that we are trying to formulate, put it into words, into a road map, and then take it forward. For dreams to turn to reality, we can't sit on the balcony and ponder over it. We've got to put our shoulders to the yoke and till the land, you know, this fertile soil, and metaphorically, the mind, so that we can convert these thoughts into actions. We want to see a green Goa, we want to see a fertile Goa, we want to see an affluent Goa being able to sustain itself not only through industry and all these other streams that we have got, but also through agriculture. Consider this that we have a population that is not even thousandth of that of India. We have a landmass which is much bigger. We are one of the 28 states in India. But are we contributing in that same fashion in terms of agriculture? No. The majority of our produce that we get and we consume every day in Goa comes from out of state. In this, do we do we address, in this vision document, do we address this issue that agriculture in Goa is suffering, it is facing decline? And there are a few factors that are affecting um, or rather causing this. Now, one of the, I mean, there, there, are, there are three that I have highlighted. There are many of them. One of them is gentrification. I mean, it's a natural phenomenon that as we educate the population, as the population grows, and uh, in, I mean intellectually as well as uh, in knowledge, we tend to take up so-called white-collar jobs. People tend to to migrate from blue-collar jobs and green-collar jobs to the white-collar jobs. In this kind of a situation, we definitely face this big issue of lack of labor in the agriculture sector. In Goa, traditionally, agriculture has been labor-intensive. Very little mechanization has taken place over the years. It is in the last few years that we see a little bit of mechanization, but in the past it has never been. The reason is that there was no need to. Our, our agrarian economy has been based on a labor-intensive system. In the future though, with the growth of the, um, uh, the white-collar sector, you are going to face this uh, you know, shortage of labor in the agriculture sector. The only way to, to counter it is to actually bridge that gap by bringing in mechanization. Now, how do you bring in mechanization? Obviously, for that, you have to bring in that intellectual uh, angle to it. Now, that's the second issue that we face, is that we are facing an intellectual bankruptcy in the systems that we have in agriculture. In the sense, if we consider our ancestors, the way they conducted uh, all the uh, agrarian operations, there was a certain amount of knowledge that passed from generation to generation, and there was reasons for why things were done. In the last 50 years, we have begun to lose it because urbanization has been so rapid, gentrification has been so rapid, that there is a, a, a sort of a, a big hole or a wind, you know, that has been created in this transmission of knowledge. What we are being taught today is book knowledge. It is exactly like it was being said that today a toddy tapper, toddy tapper's son knows how to climb the coconut tree, knows everything about the coconut tree, but if he goes to college or he goes to school and tries to write about it, he won't face or he won't be able to fare as well as a guy who has written only about it by studying in a, in a book or on Google. You take it down to actually uh, the practical level, we are going to soon face a situation where we will not be able to pluck the coconuts off the trees that we have got around us. 
It will just be an utopian dream that you will have a tender coconut. Bridging this is very important. How do you do that? It's not just by saying, okay, let's introduce a subject into uh, college or to have, uh, you know, Krishi Vigyan Kendras. You need to be able to bring a certain standard in the level of education that you have got in, in this sector. Look at the farmer, not as a poor man. Look at the farmer as another member of industry. And to do that, you need to glamorize the industry. That's the third issue. When you, when you glamorize agriculture, when you make it glamorous, then it will draw people to want to, to work in that sector. Not only that, they will want to have a kind of education that suits that particular level of uh, you know, industry. It's like, why do we only have to have uh, uh, people with uh, so-called intellect working in you know, the, um, becoming doctors or lawyers or engineers you know, or scientists? Why can't the same type of people be also working in the agriculture sector? Why is it that we have to f feel that, oh, you've got the least amount of marks in class, you can become a farmer? Why can't the person who has topped the batch in that particular college also want to become a farmer? That's because we have not glamorized it enough. That's why, that is because we look down upon agriculture, we look down upon farming, okay? And in turn, the person who has aspirations to become that farmer, he loses that or he deviates away from this particular sector because there is a negativity involved in that particular stream. There is a negativity attributed to that particular sector. If you look at it, we are, we are, you know, we are uh, talking on affluent Goa, on the topic of affluent Goa. You've got industry and you've got agriculture. When I address issue of agriculture, I look at it as the poor cousin of industry. And that's exactly what it is. But it, it is not so. The thing is that Goa has got such a lot of fertile soil, okay, and resources that we can put to use, that if you actually use a proper method, yeah, they establish methodology in the systems that, that are there, bring in intellect back again, bring in mechanization, you will be able to change this industry around, and you will make it as profitable and as, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, empowered as any other industry in Goa bring about all this change in this, uh, you know, in, the, in this way of thinking that we have got. Let us start right at the top because we say let's start at the bottom. No, let's start at the top. We elect representatives and we send them to governors. Not once have we stopped to think that we are talking about education, we are talking about all these things that actually you need to train these same legislatures, these lawmakers, these people who govern us, okay, in some basic nuances of governance. Good governance doesn't, doesn't come by setting up a set of principles and giving it to them. Good governance comes about by training them to be good governors. Setting, electing them, and then sending, off them, uh, sending them off to the, uh, you know, the assembly or to the panchayats and the gram sabhas is not enough. We need to have another school only to be able to have training for these elected representatives. Start with them because they then understand that this is the way we need to implement all these changes. There is there needs to be a certain school where every legislator, every uh, uh, bureaucrat and every uh, member of, this, uh, of the government is trained to think in a particular manner. Each one has got his right and his um, free thinking capacity. But the difference is that a vision for the state has to be shared. You can't have a million visions. It has to be a common vision, a common goal. Goal can only be achieved if we set a, a, a way of, you know, of everybody looking at the same, uh, what do you call it, the same vision in a particular manner. You set a route for them. Then they bring in their skills, their judgment, their uh, talents to that. And they enhance that. It is like a football. It has got a lot of patches on the football. And when everybody looks at the ball, okay, from any angle, you will see a different facet of it. But at the end of the day, it's the same ball. It is the same way. This needs to be implemented. This particular kind of uh, school needs to be set up. It is not enough only at that level. Then you need to take this to the next level. That means you need to have this kind of training sessions broken down and that you have PTAs in schools. That is another form of disseminating information. We forget that people keep learning till the day they die. And it is not just in school that people learn. 
you need to be able to transmit knowledge throughout. And the way to do that is also during these sessions where PTAs are, are, are looked at. It is at these PTA meetings that you can actually bring about ideas like explaining to them that agriculture is good. Because it's the parents who will influence the children that agriculture is not good. They want them to become rocket scientists. Not everybody can be a rocket scientist. So you need to start implementing these things. These are the issues that we all need to look at and we need to start implementing this Goa Vision 2035. I always say that entrepreneurs are born in the cradles of knowledge and they're trained on the playgrounds of society. Why this? I have, I have experience in this particular thing, is that whatever knowledge you may have will not suffice you. It is what peers do to you, how you interact with them, what they train you, how to handle you know, the, the nuances of the game of life to become street smart. That is what actually makes these entrepreneurs. Not everybody can be an entrepreneur, but those that can be are the ones that will actually make this sea change in agriculture. There is another thing that we have to also address and look at, which is there in the vision document, is that we need to look at the fragmentation of land in Goa. That is something that we need to take about strictly because the, you know, with the introduction of the Tenancy Act, it has led to people not wanting to give lands, even though they are fallow, to others to cultivate for the fear of losing it or creating a tenant on that property. As thinkers, there have to be ways that we have to devise to enable contract farming to take place. There will be entrepreneurs who will want to take this forward. But how? It's not just about saying that, okay, we should have contract farming. It should be a practical approach to the thing. I have been trying this myself in, in, you know, in trying to get uh, farms on contract to be able to amalgamate them and have mechanization that, uh, you know, uh, implemented in those places. Now, you. There's no point in buying a huge combined harvester if you're running a small half an acre farm because by the time you take two turns, you're done with it and then you leave it idle for the rest of the year. The way to do that is to be able to amalgamate a lot of these fragmented farms and create holdings in contract. But how do we do it? Because the practical um, uh, you know, difficulties that one faces in a day-to-day -day life is that getting over the mindset, you know, the same mindset that you talk about, the knowledge is there, but the getting over the mindset that you will lose the land, you know, is something that is so difficult, it can only be done when it comes at a state level. Knowledge has to be disseminated at a state level, and it starts, as I said, right at the top, and it, then it filters down to the, to the bottom. There's no point in starting at grassroots because it does not rise any, any further. In, you know, to keep it short and to conclude, one of the things that we need to do for agriculture, for sure, is goanization. It's not just about being seen in India, because Goa is a brand in India that we know. But we need to go organize or, or make Goa as a brand internationally for our produce. We have got very little produce that goes out from Goa, okay, as a brand. I'm talking of agricultural produce. But our rice that we grow here, we have got ample rice to not only suffice ourselves, we've got ample rice to be able to, to uh, uh, send it out of state. If we just look at rice itself and we were to brand the red kernel variety as a Goa brand, we would, we would be able to push it outside the state's uh, boundaries. At present, we are buying food from outside and it doesn't make sense when we have got ample opportunity to be able to not only suffice for ourselves but take it beyond our boundaries. We have to, we have to, we have to glamorize this profession. If you don't glamorize it, you know, you're going to keep the farmer poor, you're going to keep students and uh, people from joining this profession. Students aspire to be somebody. They want to be film stars, but they will never want to be a farmer. Why? It's because of the glamorization of the film industry. You need to glamorize this industry. And we finally have to, intrinsically, each of us have to understand that we have to produce, uh, protect local produce. This is something that is missing in this whole uh, document, is that we have to protect our produce. Now, the thing is that if you look at it, we have got the Goa Horticultural uh, uh, you know, uh, Corporation, which is, has got all these little kiosks of vegetables. 
How many of these vegetables that you get are grown locally in those kiosks? It's fantastic. Everybody queue up there because you get it at prices so-called cheaper than in the market. But nearly 75% of those vegetables and fruits that you get in those places are from out of state. They're not from Goa. And it just doesn't make hand sense when you call it Goa Horticultural Corporation uh, kiosk. You should call it the Belgium Horticultural uh, kiosk, you know? So it, it, if we are being sincere about what we are trying to do, then we need to go to all levels, right? Start at the top so that there's education there. Glamorize the profession so that all of us have an opportunity to look at agriculture as a viable profession. And finally, protect our produce. Thank you.